Hello and welcome to today's video. This is Leah at buttercreamparties.com. Today I want to share with you my no chill, no spread uh, cut out sugar cookie recipe as well as my crusting vanilla buttercream frosting recipe. So in my stand mixer, I am putting in one cup of cold salted butter that I have cut into cubes. We are going to make the sugar cookie recipe first because we want these to cool before we frost them. And I'm also mixing in one cup of granulated white sugar. You are going to mix that on high speed until it's completely creamed together. This recipe is a no chill, no spread cut out sugar cookie dough recipe, which is why we use cold salted butter. We want all of our ingredients to stay really cold so we can skip the chill portion of it and make these cookies as quick as possible. All right, so once it is creamed together, we are going to add in one egg and anywhere from one and a half teaspoons to one tablespoon of vanilla extract. If you know me, if you've been following me for a while, I always put more vanilla extract in, so I put in a tablespoon. All right, and what you see here is me adding in the dry ingredients. The dry ingredients are three cups of all-purpose flour. Um, you know, a lot of people get upset when I say cups instead of grams. I'm really just a home baker, guys. Like, I'm not pro professional. Uh, when I look it up on Google, it says 284 grams, so you can go by that. I just do the scoop and level method. So three cups all-purpose flour, and then you're gonna put two teaspoons of baking powder. You're gonna mix that into a medium-sized bowl for your dry ingredients, and then you're going to mix it in to your sugar cookie dough a little bit at a time or whatever your you know stand mixer can handle. Then you're going to want to put some flour on your countertop and start rolling out the dough. I like to just do like a third to half of the dough at a time because I can't fit all of my sugar cookies onto my cookie sheet and the more you roll it out the more you're going to get those lines in your sugar cookies. And I'm using the Joseph Joseph adjustable rolling pin. I absolutely love it. I like to bake my cookies at 3 8 of an inch. I think it's perfect when you're using buttercream frosting since it is a thicker frosting. I also don't like to flour my cookie cutter because I want the cookie dough to stay on the cutter when I transfer it to the cookie sheet. That way there's less chance of it changing shape. So my cookie sheet fits six of these cookies comfortably. So I'm just gonna make six this time. I wanna make sure to put you know, a good few inches in between each cookie. This is going to help it not spread. So here they are coming out of the oven, baked. I baked them 350 for seven to 10 minutes, You know, depending on the size of your cookie. So while the cookies are cooling, we're gonna make the buttercream frosting. So I'm gonna put in one cup of room temperature unsalted butter. And sometimes I will do a mix of unsalted butter and salted. Um, you know, do half a cup of unsalted and half a cup of salted butter. Just kind of depends on, you know, what I'm feeling like for the recipe. Both taste really good. And then in the summertime, sometimes I will do a half a cup of either unsalted or salted butter with a half a cup of high ratio shortening. That can be really good for if it's really hot out and you don't want your buttercream to melt as quickly, that high ratio shortening will help that. But the rest of the year, I just use butter. 
So I'm whipping this butter on high speed until it is light and fluffy. We want to cancel out as much of the yellow tones as much as possible. I'm gonna link in the description a blog post that I wrote about different types of butter that you can use because if you want like a grass-fed butter, which I recommend for you know cooking and eating, that's gonna be really yellow. You're gonna want a butter that is much lighter in color. So I'll link that in the description of what brands I found work best for buttercream. But we're gonna whip it as long as we can. It's usually like five minutes or so that it takes until it gets light and fluffy and cancels out most of the yellow tones. Okay, now we are going to mix in our powdered sugar or 10 times or confectioner's sugar, whatever you wanna call it. We're gonna put in four cups and I know that sounds like a lot and it is a lot, but this is how we get that crusting buttercream. We wanna have a lot of sugar to fat in order to make it crust nicely and so that it kind of acts as a preservative. We're gonna add in a tablespoon of vanilla extract and a tablespoon of milk. You can also use a half and half or cream, whatever you have on hand. I do recommend if you're gonna use milk, whole milk is better, but you know, sometimes you can even get away with using water. So there's a lot of variability and flexibility in this recipe and it will still crust. You really just wanna make sure you don't add too much liquid. So that's why I start with one tablespoon and then I'm going to get it up to kind of a smooth peanut butter consistency. So however much milk or liquid you're gonna to need to add to that. One thing I do want to note, once you add your powdered sugar, you do not wanna turn your mixer up any higher than low or whatever the first level is because if you have the mixer up too high, it's going to introduce a lot of bubbles and then you're going to have more of a whipped buttercream, which tastes amazing. It's really good for like cakes and cupcakes, but on cookies, you don't wanna have, you know, a bunch of bubbles getting in the way when you're piping. So I'll link another blog post too in the description of how you can fix that, but let's just try to avoid it altogether. Because we're taking our time and mixing on low, we're going to want to come in with a rubber spatula and clean up the edges because we don't want to have any chunks of powdered sugar. Now, it, you don't have to get it all completely um, mixed in. I would rather you under mix your buttercream than over mix because over mixing, you're going to get the bubbles. Under mixing, you're going to be mixing it more when you add in your gel food coloring. So don't overthink it. This is the consistency that I prefer for buttercream frosting. That is such a big advantage of buttercream over royal icing is that you don't have to mix a bunch of consistencies. Just get one consistency and you can do everything with it. Now it's really important that when we use colors on our buttercream frosting that we are using a gel food dye. Do not use the liquid dyes that are typically sold at grocery stores because that's just not going to be strong enough. You're not really going to get a color. I am using Wilton Rose here. I love Wilton. I know that it's kind of like looked down upon in the sugar cookie community. I'm not entirely sure why. Maybe I started with Wilton and so I just know how to use it, but I've used a lot of other brands and you know, the other brands are great too. I use all of them. You know, I don't find any issue with Wilton. 
So I'm just gonna do a basic sugar cookie design today. So I'm just filling my icing bag. I don't even have a coupler or a tip or anything in there. And I'm just using my fork to put it in the icing bag. I love using the 12 inch icing bags for sugar cookie decorating. Don't get like the 16 inch. It just holds too much and it will make your hand hurt more. Push down all of the frosting as far as you can and then you're going to twist it shut. Like I said, I'm just gonna do a quick cookie to show you the process. I'm gonna cut a big portion off and then start in the middle of the cookie and do a quick spiral. I'm gonna take my nine inch angled flat spatula to smooth out the frosting and then add some sprinkles for fun so you can use this these two recipes for any of the sugar cookie designs that you want to do in buttercream thanks so much for watching please like and subscribe